Well, greetings, dear friends around the world, uh, those of you who, like me, are former members of the Worldwide Church of God. When I began this channel, when I founded it, when I set it and uh, determined its purpose, my main purpose was to actually reach the world and fulfill, as far as I'm concerned, and as much as I can contribute to, the fulfillment of Matthew 24:14 to preach the gospel of the good news to the whole world. Uh, of course, with this modern technology and all these modern facilities, all that we need sometimes is just goodwill because we've got so many devices that we can do it. We've got this internet, this wonderful miracle of internet. And uh, I thought, well, I need to give indeed my contribution and partake in spreading the good news with other people who are of, go of the goodwill because I've got so much precious knowledge that I've acquired when I was an ambassador, and plus I've also saved and uh, preserved so many wonderful materials that I could share with the rest of the world uh, in for a witness, as far as the rest of the world is concerned. But when it comes to other people who are interested in the Bible, you know, that can be also a good witness for them, and it might be useful in their spiritual walk. So that was my purpose. My purpose was actually to reach the world, uh, reach people in the world, and uh, little did I realize that uh, many of you who are former members of the Worldwide Church of God would become subscribers to this channel. I was, in fact, very much surprised to see how many of you are there, and I'm very happy that uh, this channel has attracted you for the simple reason that I've gone through the same things and I've experienced the same things that uh, many of you perhaps most of you have also experienced, so I can indeed understand what you have been through and uh, I can understand your position that you might have stayed uh, either neutral or that you just did not want to join any organization, any church organization, etc., etc. Well, that's quite understandable and that's why I, for some time, I've been wanting to give you a special message of this sort with a purpose to actually encourage you to continue uh, and stay on this channel and continue to follow this channel and uh, continue to maintain your close relationship with Jesus Christ and with God the Father. Because, as it says in the Bible in First John, it says that our um, relationship, our community, is our, or our uh, fellowship, however you want to put it, is primarily with uh, with our Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, whose blood cleanses us from all sin. Now, that being the case means that that is the most important thing in all of our personal lives. When I was about 20, I fled the uh, civil war in former Yugoslavia and I found myself in England my aunt Matilda was a member of the Worldwide Church of God. She was such an outstanding example of a Christian life that uh, that drew my attention. And in the courses of our conversation, she told me an important message that uh, Europe was going to be uh, organized and was going to be the leading power in the world, that the Europe is, go is going to be led by Germany and also uh, influenced by Vatican. Now, being a historian and uh, being in love with history, I could very easily see that happening because the main countries, the main entities that destroyed former Yugoslavia were exactly <laughs> Germany and Vatican. So that drew my attention, and I, for the first time in my life, I began reading the Bible back in 1991. And then sometimes, I think it was, was it October, November? I, uh, well, it must be November Sometimes toward the end of 1991, I requested to uh, to visit the fellowship, and uh, that's how began my journey with the Worldwide Church of God. Several months later, I realized that uh, I realized that baptism was the main and primary thing in our lives. So, being convinced of that, I requested baptism, and on 10th of March 1992, I was baptized. Well, it was already kind of late, but um, I did also apply for the Ambassador College because what else could I do? You know, I was in a can sense, I was a refugee, I had no rights to work or do anything in England, and there was a vicious civil war uh, in the country where I, where I was born. 
So nevertheless, the church administration was in England at that time, or that time was uh, very favor favorable towards me, and uh, they nevertheless allowed me to apply for ambassador college. And I was basically the last student who arrived to <laughs> Ambassador College campus in Big Sandy, Texas, and that would be August to uh, August 1992. Uh, little did I realize that much of the curriculum was changed because the uh, theological classes were downsized, and the emphasis was now on liberal arts and all of that stuff because you know the. Uh, apostate leadership of Pasadena led by Joseph Scotch Sr. and he was surrounded by his close uh, close, how can you call them, close uh, friends and, uh, and other corporates <laughs> his son his adopted son Mike Fazell and uh, some other names which are not really all that important but uh, you can find them in historical files so um the apostate leadership actually wanted to make that to convert that college into a typical kind of uh, educational institution, American educational institution, and that was about it. And they were, of course, on the way to uh, change the doctrine. Well, we didn't know didn't know about that, but some people told us, and re later I learned that even back in the 1987, there were some overtures over towards the doctrinal changes. And, uh, you know, all those changes were now in place by the time that we reached 1994 and 1995. In the year 1995, the whole-scale doctrinal revision was launched. And uh, the first attack, as far as I remember, was the... The first attack was on the holidays. They are Jewish holidays. We're not obligated to keep them and all that rubbish. Then... Uh, even prior to that, there were a series of uh, lectures by Dr. Stavrinides related to the to Trinity, because God supposedly is not is not unity. He is not you know family. He is a Trinity. So there were those uh, theological expositions or hypostases and all that rubbish, and that began in 1990, even back in 1992. Since I was a librarian in an ambassador college, I could see, I remember uh, tapes, videotapes, a series of videotapes that all the faculty members and others were uh, obligated to uh, watch, and those were the Dr. Stavrinides lectures on hypoth hypothesis, whatever, however you call that rubbish, and of course, it was all going toward the uh, implementing implementation of the Trinity doctrine into the worldwide Church of God. That was all back in 1992, but uh, but especially 1993, when I was an ambassador, when I was working at the library, I remember that uh, there would there would be faculty members, professors coming to check out check out those videos and watch them and so on. So that was in 1993. Now I realized. Why? Because uh, I realize now that I know something about the ecumenical movement. Well, uh, the main common denominator that the ecumenical movement and, and, and their churches have is belief in Trinity, that they believe in Trinity. So that's the one common denominator that they share and they use as a basis of their unity. So, you know, the church, the Worldwide Church of God was supposed to now switch to Trinity and then be a good candidate for a ecumenical Protestant and Catholic movement. Now I understand that. That was in 19, back in 1993. Uh, soon after that, the uh, the holidays were attacked, of course. And that was, that was February of 1995. I had a friend who was a refugee from Romania. Uh, and it was February of 1995, and he showed up at my workplace one evening... Uh, to my surprise, because he never did that in the past, and uh, my work work hours were ending, and I was I was leaving. That that must be about well, I guess, perhaps eight o'clock or something like that. And he he parked his car into the parking the library parking lot. He took me to his car, and he began to tell me that Mr. Tkach has been launching, you know, various different changes. Well, being naive. Keep in mind that I was baptized only for three years and that uh, basically I didn't have really time to go through all the doctrinal things of the church because I realized, I thought, 
naively that when I once I come to the Ambassador College, I'll be learning all the Bible doctrines that I never knew because I began reading the Bible only when I was 20. I lived, I grew up in a, an atheistic uh, country whose official doctrine was Darwinism and evolution. So I, you know, I, I naively believed that the Ambassador was going to provide me with all that necessary Bible knowledge. This, this friend of mine, he said that I said to him, well, well, God is then leading the Mr. Kach. We always believed that, you know, that the leadership was led by God. Well, he said, you know, he's going to change the Sabbaths. I'm like, well, well, I said, well, when he said that, I knew that that would be something I could not really swallow because, you know, the Sabbath, unlike other Bibles, the Sabbath is very clearly mentioned in the Bible, in Serbian translation, in Serbian rendering, by its proper name that we have for, in all Slavic languages, for the seventh day. Seventh day is called Subota in uh, or Subota in all Slavic languages. So we don't call it Sabbath or Shabbat. We call it Subota, just like we call the seventh day. So uh, you know that was very clear revelation in the in the Serbian Bible. Well, I said to him then, well, if he plans that, well, God is going, God is going to stop him. God is going to lead him to. Well, no, he's not going to stop. My friend responded, and he took me to uh, the house of our uh, local physician. Bob Harrington, a lovely person, and Bob Harrington happened to be uh, a close friend to Ambassador Foundation, head head of the Ambassador Foundation, whose name right now I cannot exactly remember, but you can always find it in the files, in the historical files, and of course all the any changes that were coming from the apostate leadership, the uh, Pasadena staff would first be notified of. So uh, the head of the Ambassador Foundation and our physician were in close touch and they knew. Uh, so we exactly were receiving the information about the latest doctrinal changes that were being planned. While seated, while sitting at that, uh, at the home of our physician, my friend Alex brought me the, uh, a list of doctrinal changes that were supposed to be implemented in the church. And to my shock and horror, I just saw that the church was going to keep Sunday, the church was going to keep Christmas and Easter, and church was going to do away with the laws of cleanliness, clean meats, etc., etc., and I was completely taken by surprise. But then I realized, well, because Alex was my very good and close friend and he never lied to me, and then I realized all this information was actually coming out of the, out of the headquarters, of course, not through the official channels, but nevertheless coming out of the headquarters because uh, all those documents would first be distributed and circulating around, Pas around to Pasadena staff. So I said to my friend Alex, I said, look, uh, probably our fellow students are not going to believe us, but nevertheless, uh, I feel an obligation that we need to warn them at least of what is coming. So... They might think we are crazy, we are lunatics, but uh, when that happens, when those changes do take place in the church, they will perhaps remember that somebody warned them about about those changes and, and, and things that were coming. So uh, and what we did was we basically went and uh, took out of the library some booklets by written by Mr. Armstrong related to the grace and those difficult scriptures to be understood in Romans, Galatians, Colossians. And what we did was, at that time there were those photocopier machines and you would have a card with certain credits on that card and then you would stick the card into those into that machine and then you could make photocopies of whatever. So basically what we did is, uh, we used Sunday, Sunday afternoon, we went to the health center of Ambassador, which was, which was vacant because nobody was working on, on weekends anyway. And uh, we basically used that photocopier there to photocopy all kinds of materials related to grace, law, etc., etc. Basically grace and law, because those were the key things that the apostate leadership was trying to lead us into uh, by using, you know, the arguments that there is grace and there is no need for the law. So we just uh, photocopied materials that were defending the law of God and... Uh, explaining that those scriptures are twisted by the uh, ecumenical Christianity. Many of those things, I call them now difficult scriptures, and you'll find them on my channel, and uh, I'll probably make, well, not probably, but certainly I'll make even more recordings of that for your benefits, brethren. 
And so uh, we used it on Sunday afternoon. It was a sunny, I remember it was kind of a sunny afternoon. Uh, and it was only me, Alex and I, uh, at the health center doing it. And he said to me at once, he said, well, this all looks like being in a communist regime. And both of us actually were from the communist, uh, from the country that were of communist uh, of communist ideology, let's call it that way. And so he said, this is like, you know, making like a, a secret pamphlets and, and booklets, you know, and brochures against the communist regime. Well, he's, he kind of joked like that. And I said, yes, that's true. But I said, this is, is the wrong country, Alex. I said, look around. This is the United States of America. So uh, we then distributed those uh, literature, the things we copied to several of our uh, fellow students of course many were ignorant many didn't care but some of our fellow students were our student from our fellow student from Israel our fellow student from El Salvador uh, our fellow student from uh, Canary Islands uh, and uh, and that would be basically it a uh, few others were there as well and that's how the student underground began so, yes, brethren, if somebody would tell you that I was the one who organized Student Underground, it's true. I was the one because I could not stand to sit still. At the same, to sit still and just do nothing and see the apostasy going just without being uh, resisted. At the same time, all of us who were upholding the truth were kind of ostracized. I basically, I myself, uh, uh, initiated the cutting off the ties with all the students who were actually buying into these those changes because I could no longer believe them. The whole uh, the whole ambassador college turned into a spiritual concentration camp, in which you know you had uh, you had those who were trying to grab and gain certain position by uh, spying on others and what others believe, by reporting it to certain authorities, etc., etc. Yes, oh yes, the freedom of speech was. Uh, declaratively, as we say in Serbian, or formally it was kind of upheld, but in reality it was not. Uh, people who, and professors who preached about the, the truth were basically kind of sidelined. I remember when we had the New Testament survey, I remember that, uh, our, our teacher, Peter Nathan, was basically sidelined, and all of a sudden Mike Fazell came in to give us a, a lecture on the book of Hebrews. And he was giving us all of that rubbish, rubbish things from the Protestant, Protestant theolo uh, theologies anyway. Well, him and, uh, I don't know how many others went and graduated from so-called Azusa Pacific University. And that Azusa Pacific University is well known for, uh, schooling, uh, future or current Protestant leaders who are going to be brainwashing, uh, ignorant and uneducated people about the Bible and, and, and twisting the scripture to their own destruction, as God says, and to the destruction of those who listen to them. And therefore, uh, we could make that, we made that connection, you know, over the time because, uh, we checked the, uh, records of the Azusa Pacific University and to our surprise, we found, uh, Joseph Tkat Jr., we found Mike Fazell and others who are they being schooled? Obviously, this plot to change the uh, church to subvert it from within uh, was indeed well organized, and it was going on for uh, for a while. And so, I basically cut off my relations with all the people who were buying into those changes because I could no longer communicate with them. You know, because the obsession of everyone was the changes, uh, big changes in the church. To me, it was not any big change. It was just. Return to the old errors. It was returning to all the Constantine <laughs> Christianity, which I know very well now, uh, all of it and all of its uh, characteristics. Because I Constantine was born in my country, and uh, I'm writing a booklet on him, and he is actually the one who actually subverted the true Christianity in the fourth century by substituting uh, Sabbath with Sunday by uh, enacting a Sabbath, uh, the Sunday law that is, by substituting the Passover for, with Easter, etc., etc. And he was the one who basically entrenched Trinity into the church and so on. So therefore we can know all of this modern Christianity, we can call it modern Constantine's Christianity because that is exactly what it is. So the Passover was coming up and I said to my friend, I said I have no 
intention to keep the Passover in the so-called field house of our ambassador college because I'm not, I mean, it's the most solemn occasion in my life and I don't want to be constantly uh, uh, under pressure and anxiety. What in the world are they going now to uh, twist and, 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 uh, what are they going to falsify about the Passover anyway? So I said, I'm not going to go there. I've heard that there are, there'll be those who'll be keeping the, you know, traditional Passover. There'll be traditional Passover service. And I heard it will be in a, in a warehouse, Mishnik warehouse. So please, you know, let's get there. So he obtained directions and indeed we went, bought a little basin for the foot washing ceremony and the uh, three of us uh, I remember David Obenchain my dear friend uh, Alex Chelan and myself uh, the three of us went to keep the Passover there I was very surprised to see some of our other fellow students in fact I was very deeply touched and uh, when my friend Warren Lee kind of hugged me and said Sasha my, my brother there was my former English teacher Jerry Holcomb a wonderful lady uh, my dear friends Nogueras, uh, my friend Sandra, her sister, her father, her mother. And I'm just, you know, I'm just telling you just a few of those names, the people who really meant, meant to me. And uh, I think there was 120 of us in that warehouse, Mishnik warehouse. Anyway, that was beautiful. And then the next day uh, was the night to be much observed. Thankfully, I was uh, invited previously. All of our students, all the ambassador students would be assigned to certain families. We used to have about 5,000 members in Big Sandy. I mean, the Worldwide Church of God numbered 5,000 members. And therefore, there were enough families that could, you know, all of them were assigned. We were assigned to certain families to keep the night to be much observed with them. I was blessed enough very blessed enough to be assigned to a household with the Selig household. And uh, when when I asked my friend Jason Yates at that time, I said, uh, is this is this household okay? Are they for those changes or not? Oh, oh don't worry, he said to me. The lady of the house, <laughs> Selig, she is the she is the queen of the underground, <laughs> that's what he said. Uh, my friend Hervé, Hervé Irion and I when we were students, uh, that was it was a summer of '94, I think. We used to we were uh, while these uh, hosts were away visiting their family. We were keeping the farm, and since I love the animals, I was so thrilled to be able to feed the goats and chickens. And there was a dog called Micah. So it was a and the, the country is in a beautiful the, the house is in a beautiful countryside. So oh, plenty of cats as well. I think there were about. I don't know, seven, eight or nine cats anyway. So I was just, I really had a wonderful experience. I was feeding those animals and, uh, Hervé and I spent those days. We spent those days, you know, in that house looking after the house and the animals. And, uh, I, that's one of my fondest memories that I have from being the student. So that was the household where I was, I was assigned, thankfully. And, um, of course the students varied. Some of them were, for the changes, many were, 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 some of them were not. And so was with the staff. I remember what was his last name. I think Mr. F well, I think Philip was his name. He was from a library, library, a member of the library staff. And he said to me, well, you know, things just get a little bit, you know, uh, dynamic in the church. And then for a while, everything's fine. And they get up, they get, you know, they get stirred up again and so on. Of course, I was a new believer. So to me, those things were new. But my hostess, Argus Sealing, upon hearing what I was saying, she took me aside. She took me to her bedroom and uh, got a, it was a photocopy of a book called well it was just typed out so it was not really a book it was you might say bound a bound copy of uh, which said difficult scriptures explained at last so she said to me you'll probably you'll certainly have this you know much use of this so she handed it over to me that photocopy and i was i was so blessed that photocopy is now brethren a great blessing to me and to rest of the church of god and why? Well, because it survived. You know, I, 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 since ambassador, I left ambassador, obviously. It was, it was obvious to me that I could not stay in that concentration camp any longer. And even though, uh, the old administration, Dr. Ward's son-in-law, I remember, he granted me, 
uh, enough finances to stay for one more year, I realized that my, my stay in ambassador was, was an end. I was in the third year and I realized that no, I could not stay in this kind of, in this kind of setting. I cannot thrive. I cannot stay because this is poisonous. This is toxic. And indeed, uh, that difficult scriptures with me went to South America first or Central America rather. After that, uh, they went, went to me, uh, went to Europe, you know, with me back here to Serbia. In Serbia, I had all kinds of trials and troubles. I was without money. I was not able to obtain employment due to Sabbath and holidays. I was basically persecuted economically. I was persecuted spiritually. Nevertheless, and I had to move on several occasions. And you know, when you move and you have no vehicle and you have no, uh, means to pay for transportation, you just get rid of various things. I would just get rid of things that I may not need. Nevertheless, that wonderful photocopy stayed with me. I kept it and uh, I have uh, preserved it. And that photocopy was basically, you know, teaching us all the traditional doctrines that we, the Worldwide Church of God members, uh, had as our spiritual diet. <laughs> so, uh, you know, from all those wonderful copies and articles and stuff, somebody was very hard working and they just uh, extracted all those most important arguments that do indeed are Bible based and they do really defy all this uh, churchianity with all of its uh, myriads of wrong doctrines. They especially defy the, uh, uh, the claim that grace has taken our precedence over the law and that the Christians are not supposed to keep the law of God. Well, brethren, that's ludicrous because how could God, who is perfect, eternal, and never changes, he says in Malachi twice, I change not. How could God indeed change his law and um, exempt us from keeping the moral law? How can the moral law be nailed to the cross? How can something that regulates your morality, your relationship with God and your relationship with fellow men, how can that ever, how can that ever be nailed to the cross? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense, of course. And this, this script, this, this, this photocopy, uh, this photocopy that I had explained, uh, succinctly, and with Bible-based arguments, all those things and uh, dilemmas that somebody, anybody might have. So anyway, I kept that with me, of course, and uh, the, uh, I still remember with fondness how it was given to me on the night to be much observed, to th uh, 1995. The following, the following day was the, as you know, the first day of unleavened bread. We met at a local hotel. There were at twice, as twice as many people uh, compared to the Passover service. We had about 120, I think about 300 people basically were uh, attending uh, then the first day of unleavened bread in that hotel and uh, I remember Richard Sherrod's wife I think it was her or somebody uh, uh, but it might, might might be her she performed as a special music Exodus the uh, theme of Exodus it was so beautiful it was marvelous and I remember how thrilled I was and uh, you know May the, the month of May the end of the school year was coming up and I realized I would not return anyway but I did not tell that to the administration I said tell, told that to my friends and then you know when the school year came to an end in May I said goodbye to all of my various friends and uh, uh, three of our three of us students uh, three of us my friend from El Salvador um my friend from Israel, Hagit, my friend Kathy from Salvador and myself, we went to El Salvador. Kathy's father, uh, uh, Nelson Monti, was uh, a wonderful man. He, he came, he bought a certain vehicle, picked all three of us and took us to, uh, took us, and that took us with him and that's how I went to Central America anyway. So, uh, I spread the news about the apostasy to that part of the world. Well, many people in that part of the world, of course, didn't fall for the apostasy. And then I continued to live in, in Latin America for one year before I returned to Serbia in 1996. Well, I just wanted to give you this background just for you to know where I'm coming from and to know who is the founder of this channel. Yes, like many of you, I'm a former member of the Worldwide Church of God or like some of you who are here, I'm here. I do understand what you have gone through. 
and uh, my spiritual journey ever since the apostasy of 1995 was a rocky one <coughs> and it was a very difficult one. So I'm glad that many of you actually did not join any of these churches of God because they just continued the abusive methods of dealing with with uh, with members. They just continue with the hard hand and they continue with all sorts of errors, brethren. So I'm glad that you did not join those. I, my experience was was different than many of yours who stayed independent because, you know, I was searching for the truth and I realized that Matthew 24, 14 has to be fulfilled and I myself, by myself, could not fulfill it. I could not fulfill it, so I was looking for fellow believers who will whose heart will be in the work of God, so to speak. But, you know, in my search, I happened to end up with various false brethren. I happened to end up with various Laodicean people who didn't want to preach the gospel, or they wanted to preach the gospel into the Anglo-Saxon world so that they would have steady income. And that's all they didn't want to preach to the poor parts of the world. Uh, I met, so, you know, I, I happened to be in company in fellowship with those who were who actually showed that they were not really interested in preaching the truth because they told me no prophecy well how can you ignore the prophecy it's one third of the bible and so on and then later some of those actually did away some of those that i was in uh, fellowship with and i'm no longer with them they did away with the truth about the house of israel they did away with the truth about the seven church eras and uh, basically they became apostates, even though they still keep formally the Sabbath and the holidays. So brethren and friends, I basically also ended up being on my own after being basically pushed out of one of my former associations. I was being on my own. Uh, a, a terrible time. I didn't know where would I go. I was disoriented. I, I, I felt I was sinking into this world, but you know, Around 2012, I said to myself, you have to remember who called you to the truth. It wasn't any men, any one single man, any single person or, or, or men as a group of men. It was Jesus Christ and you have to answer to him for your behavior and for, to, to him for all that you are doing. So therefore, you better just sober up. And you cannot ignore all this knowledge God has given you. So start preaching in your own, in your native tongue. That's why you came to this country after all, to spread the good news. You came to Serbia for that reason. You didn't look for your own comfortable life in America. Many of my fellow students stayed in America and just, you know, used their degrees to get employed and uh, and, 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 and sort out their nice lives, uh, which is okay. I can understand them. They don't want to suffer economically. I can understand that now since I've suffered so terribly in this country. But at the same time, my heart was always in the work. I think I believe it was in the work. That's why I founded this channel after all. Otherwise, I wouldn't. Uh, and uh, my my heart was in the work. And uh, I said to myself, you have to remember who was the one to draw you to Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. And you have to basically overcome all these things that man has, the men have done it, done to you. All the injustice, all whatever. You just have to go over that. You just have to overcome that and keep going. So that's what I started in 2012. And then I'm not, now not going to give you any other details. I began preaching in Serbian language. There were various people who came in and got out. Uh, various people who were false brethren. Some stayed, some left. And those of us who stayed in the end, uh, uh, due to various circumstances, we joined. We did join uh, Dr. Bob Thiel and the Continuing Church of God. But nevertheless, with an open heart and mind and open arms to all those other brethren around the world uh, who may be independent or not affiliated with anyone, the policy of the continued Church of God is exactly that we are, we believe we are the truest Church of God because we believe that we preach the full truth. We do recognize other Churches of God, including independent brethren as our brethren. And we believe that Sophonia chapter 2 is being fulfilled now. There is now time of regathering. There is time to reorganize, in a sense, regather and give our best in these end times, very end times, to still spread the gospel for, for, uh, for a witness to the whole world. That's about it anyway. But I founded this channel independently as, you know, as my own 
so that I could give my own personal contribution to the uh, <coughs> to preaching the gospel. But I do it now. In I want you to be aware. I don't want you to be to feel kind of duped. I do it. Yes, in uh, cooperation, in fellowship, and in uh, with support of the Continuing Church of God and its leader Bob Thiel. Yes, I do it. Nobody, nobody censors me. Nobody tells me what to say. I choose freely topics. I've been given, in fact, even I was even ordained by Bob Thiel as an elder. He says that I'm an elder of the whole church in the whole world, not just locally. So, uh, you know, he never puts any censorship on me, neither does he direct me what shall I say or what shall I not say. If he feels the need to correct me, he does correct me in love. And I correct myself. I obey him because, of course, he's a seasoned preacher, he is a man who knows a lot, he is uh, well acquainted with church history, etc., etc., he is a scientist, by the way, he is a doctor of the natural medicine, so he deserves great respect, and he respects uh, all and any believers, and very often he asks us for our opinion, for our input, for whatever. And uh, so I do this, all of this that I do here, I do in, in, in cooperation with that organization with that man but i'm not preaching the the, the organization to you brethren and be, i don't think that's constructive why should i preach the organization to you it doesn't make any sense and after all many of you have very bad experiences with the organizations and with the hierarchies and uh, that was my main kind of objection that when i was deciding whether to go and, and join Continuing Church of God, I said to Bob, I said to Bob Till that, 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 that hierarchy was my biggest problem. Because hierarchy was abusive, and hierarchy has done so much damage to the people of God. But he told me many times, he said, but you know, it's not the hierarchy that's supposed to be. What we had as a hierarchy was, was a, a tyrannical kind of control over people, but that's how, that's not what hierarchy is supposed to be in the Church of God. And he was right. So I joined it nevertheless, I gave the chance, another chance to the hierarchy, thinking that it's much better because I could not serve the local people well without having somebody above me, without having somebody who will help me. And then over the time, well, a little did, did I know that several, basically a year after I joined that hierarchy, I myself became a part of the hierarchy. But let me assure you, I never do anything that the hierarchy and members of the hierarchy have, have done traditionally to God's people. I don't think I'm the smartest in the world. I don't think that any that I, anything that I say is always the full truth. When I make mistake, I certainly uh, correct myself publicly. I tell, tell you, know, sorry, I made mistake. I didn't know about this, that, and the other. That's how the true believers should behave. I believe not, you know. And those who are given to be the helpers of the joy of people are to be their humble. And I always tell the, all the people that I get in touch with, yes, I'm an elder, but I'm the helper of your joy. Being an elder is not a title that I wear and uh, flaunt before everyone. Oh, I'm an elder. Look how great I am. I'm not. Brendan, I'm not great. Uh, I've got my weaknesses. I've got my strong points. But no, I'm not great and I'm not the smartest in the world. I'm not the greatest in the world at all. Uh, and very often I'm always open to listen to any constructive idea and uh, and uh, you know make it make that idea reality or you know or present that idea to others if that idea is uh, of any value well i've got friends who are in other church or church of god organizations or who are even not in church of god organizations but are still faithful to god uh, you know they would send me they would send me their notes. I was ask, I would always ask them for their notes, for their sermon notes. If they if they would send them to me, they do, they do. And I've delivered, I think at least one or or or, or two of those sermons uh, that were directly sent by those wonderful friends, acquaintances. I've been using also the resources of uh, churches of God whenever they're true. I'm just only not using their uh, prophecy. Things, well, they're not even much prophecy. Those churches of God out there don't preach much prophecy anyway. And there are about 50 or so doctrinal errors that they have when it comes to prophecy. Uh, the only change that I've made, uh, now speaking of my former membership in the, in the Worldwide Church of God, the only uh, change, the only, well, it's not a change, it's rather correction of understanding 
There are only corrections and understandings when it comes to prophecy because we believe, and I believe that now I understand much better the prophecies, how they're outlined in the Bible. One of the main prophecies, one of the main changes was, I'll, I'll tell you, was the Second Thessalonians. That's how it began, actually, my journey toward the, the uh, continuing Church of God. It was the uh, Second Thessalonians. We traditionally thought it would be the Pope who would be performing all those false miracles. But uh, Bob Thiel has written one good article in which he proved it was not the Pope, that it was actually the first beast or the king of the north or the coming European dictator. Now that was a big revelation to me, but I could not deny that that was the case. And I realized why Mr. Armstrong, Mr. Armstrong never really looked deeply into that. He basically adopted, I realized as I analyzed the church history, he adopted the Valdensian stance on that because in the Middle Ages when Valdensians were the true church of God in Europe, uh, the uh, Roman Catholic Church had both ecclesiastical and civil power. So the, the clergy, Roman Catholic clergy, were both, uh, you know, uh, the, the priests as well as the uh, civil servants. So the, uh, the Valdensians concluded that the head of that church, the Pope, would be, would be the, the man of sin, the son of perdition of Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, and we, Ms. Ramsar, just inherited that from that church era and adopted that as the doctrine. Well, we realized and we have uh, proved or, uh, through the Bible that no, that's not the case. Uh, the man of sin, the son of perdition, will be the first beast, the uh, European dictator. Uh, based on the Bible and what is written about the dictator in the book of Daniel, we have concluded that most likely the one... It will be Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg, a German, a German historian, uh, German, not historian. He's now a philosopher. He's now a doctor of philosophy. Recently, he was hired by uh, one of the European TV networks to be political commentator. And uh, we have given, we have given the reasons and the proof, and we have given the uh, arguments why he is most likely the first beast or the uh, son of perdition or the uh, king of the north as he is described in the book of Daniel but that's now another topic so when it comes to prophecies we have only refined our understanding the main understanding of the prophetic events have not changed at all no we do exactly follow what Mr. Armstrong gave us however we have just refined we have just refined certain understandings of who might be who who might be where when it comes to the prophecy and the uh, that's what many of these churches of God out there basically avoid to do because they seem to be either afraid of prophecy or if not afraid, they might be just complacent about it or they think it's not relevant for us or they believe it's too negative. Well, brethren, whether it's too negative or not, we just have to, we just have to, you know, we have to dedicate ourselves to that and we have to dedicate ourselves to understanding it because Jesus Christ said, watch. How can we watch if we don't know the prophecy? Watch and also pray to be accounted worth to escape. Escape what? Well, to escape the prophesied horror called the Great Tribulation. How can you escape the prophesied horror if you don't know what the Great Tribulation is and how horrible it is going to be? So anyway, that's all that changed in my belief system. Or I just corrected and refined my prophetic understanding. And I've been trying to also encourage all of you to... Uh, uh, look into that and uh, to correct all those errors. Nothing more, nothing else. I'm not, the purpose of this message again was for me to tell you who I was, that I'm also a former WCG member, that I know what you have gone through, and that I'm not going to convince you or try to convince you to join this or that church organization, not at all. I do encourage you to participate in the work of God, uh, and uh, if you ever want to, anyway, uh, come to any of our Church of God, any of Continuing Church of God Fellowship, that you should feel that you're welcome to, as long as you're not going to be spreading any kind of heresies or any kind of errors, you're well welcome to, because we are not, we're not a closed-minded and we're not closed closed door church we're not you know we're not kind of a sect you know that does not allow people to come into their midst no that's not the case yes in our inner circle we do believe and i believe that the time of regathering has come and i fulfilled that prophecy in zophaniah chapter 2 uh, and all those who want to fulfill that prophecy are welcome to but my point is that uh, i understand that you have been abused by the hierarchies of all sorts and i understand that you are just staying away from various Organized churches of God. Yes, I understand because I was terribly, terribly harmed and terribly misused and, 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 and dropped and ostracized by various churches of God. And, uh, I don't mind anymore. That was their decision. 
and God is the ultimate judge and he will have the final word and the final say. My purpose was just to uh, encourage you to continue with your relationship with God and to continue to maintain it, brethren. Please don't give up on it. If you've given up on organized churches, yes, I can understand why. You've been victims of those hierarchies, but uh, don't give up on your relationship with God. Well, thank you that you are uh, following this channel because this channel is out. This channel was exactly founded with the purpose to spread the truth. Uh, but I didn't realize that many of you who are former WCG members would come and listen to this channel and follow it. So it's uh, it's a quite a surprise to me. It's a surprise. It might be a flattery rather, but I'm kind of surprised because, uh, well, since you're here anyway, obviously you're drawn, I do believe, and all of you believe, those of you who wrote to me, who as former members of WCG, you wrote to me that you believe that it was God who drew you to this channel and has given you this blessing. Well, I'm privileged to indeed serve you in that capacity. I just want to encourage you to remember, you were called, as it says in John 6:44, you're called by God the Father. Nobody can come to me unless God draws him. So uh, Jesus Christ is the one to whom the Father drew you. You accepted Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. You didn't realize, and you didn't realize as I did, and that we were part at that time of the... Uh, church, church, worldwide church of God, you know, a hierarchy, government, whatever you want to call it, that was going to apostatize and is going to change and subvert the church from within. You were not, you became victims of various, various abuses and various, uh, hierarchy, hierarchy members who abused you and used you and stuff like that and whose main, uh, parole was pay, pray and obey. And, you know, you had to obey them without any question. You had to obey any of their words, as if they were the popes, etc., etc. I know you have got a, a variety of experiences and a variety of uh, damages and hurts that you have. But it's time to get over those hurts because we are entering, we have entered already the very last, the very last days. Uh, it's time to, brethren, to get healed from those hurts. It's time to, for those of you who want to be regathered, it's time to regather in a band of uh, dedicated Philadelphian Christians who want to, who understand the key of David, meaning the identity of the, of the 12 tribes of Israel, the identity of David's house today. Those who want to spread the good news, uh, is the time for that. And for those of you who are still distrustful, of course, of various organizations, but you are here and want to follow, well, the main priority for all of you, brethren, should be, indeed, the main priority should be that you maintain that relationship with God that you maintain relationship with God and, and, and thankfully and hopefully uh, that you would maintain it with zeal and not with uh, not with lukewarmness. So remain zealous uh, wherever you are. Uh, you know, uh, if you're still independent, good. Stay be independent because you cannot trust anyone and that's understandable. But please don't give up on your relationship with God. Don't give up and realize that the Great Tribulation is coming up uh, we are going to know exactly after the peace deal is signed in the Middle East uh, by the um, by the European uh, how do you call that by the European uh, I'm, I'm looking for the exact English word but it escapes me well with the efforts of Europe there will be a peace deal that will be signed in the Middle East between the Middle Eastern nations and then at that time at that point we'll know that we have about three and a half years to the start of the Great Tribulation. So the Great Tribulation is coming up, uh, and uh, I certainly don't want any of you to end up in the Great Tribulation, uh, but if we become lukewarm, all of us, we will end up in the Great Tribulation to be refined. So uh, that's why I want to encourage you that uh, if you're independent, that's okay, because you're still hurt, but uh, uh, ask God to give you strength to overcome it, and ask God to give you strength to keep a zealous relationship with Him, and in Jesus Christ, because that is going to maintain us. And uh, anyway, the, when our work stops, somebody, one of these days, the European dictator is going to obviously censor me and others. When this work stops, brethren, there will be the great, there will be the great tribulation, and there will be the two witnesses who are going to indeed be continuing the work of God throughout the great tribulation, and there will be witnesses to the world. So therefore, uh, we will have the witness until the very end. But the main point is that uh, keep in mind that your relationship with God is uh, a primary thing because it was God who called you, drew you to Jesus Christ. And therefore, because he did it, because he did it, he obviously called you for a purpose. The purpose was obviously to give you a reward and the purpose was that you will help, that you will help other nations uh, in the kingdom of God to uh, come to the point to accept Jesus Christ, true Jesus Christ, 
to uh, start living God's way and of course then inherit as the result of the eternal life. That's why God called you. Remember why he called you at this time of Satan's great deception. And because he called you and uh, because he values you, please appreciate that relationship with him. Try to be, do your best to be zealous. Uh, whatever you can do to support the work of God, please feel free to do so. Feel free to, you know, say how, uh, why. There is a way to support God, the work of God anyway. Uh, well, with your prayers, if nothing else, uh, support it because that's the key thing for our spiritual growth at this time. And we are approaching the time, a very exciting time, when the European dictator is going to come onto the world scene. And when the European dictator is indeed going to uh, be the one who will not like what we have to say, what I have to say, and they'll censor me and censor all those who preach the truth anyway. So uh, realize that we are living in those days. And that of the primary importance it is to maintain your close relationship with God. I'm thankful again. I didn't realize that many of you from the, with the Worldwide Church of God background would come and subscribe to this channel. But I'm happy that you're here because uh, that means that you haven't given up on God. And because you haven't given up on God, the uh, apostate hierarchy of the Worldwide Church of God gave up on all of us who want to live godly way of life. But I'm glad that you did not give up on God's way of life. And you should not. You should never give up on God's way of life, brethren. Never. So therefore, keep that as your as your focus. Please stay with God. Please be organized. Uh, you know, uh, try to have always uh, services of one sort. Even if you're independent, it doesn't matter. You can use this channel for Sabbath services if you wish. Uh, also realize that you can always keep the Feast of Tabernacle. If nobody wants to take you as being independent, yeah, you can always uh, keep the Feast with the Continued Church of God if you wish to keep it in an organized, with an organized church. If you want to keep it independently, that's again your choice. Uh, so uh, just do your best to keep all that we have learned in WCG when Mr. Armstrong was alive. And then, of course, discard all this other rubbish that happened with the uh, apostasy. Uh, the apostasy is an interesting phenomenon in the Bible, and I may try to address it in, 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 in some of my messages, just to warn us, because the apostasy may happen again, just prior to Christ's return, and any of us, and all of us, might be members of that apostasy, including myself, of course. Therefore, I think we should be watching. So please continue to maintain a relationship with God. You are former members of the Worldwide Church of God, that was a Philadelphia uh, Philadelphia era of God's church that in which God used Mr. Armstrong to uh, start that era and to develop that era so now we are now in post Philadelphia era, we are now in the age, church age dominated by the Laodicean attitude and you can see that very easily by the Laodicean attitude anyway but uh, we still, there is still a Philadelphia remnant in that uh, church age and therefore we should all strive to be that Philadelphia remnant Remnant, we all need to continue to watch and uh, to pray to be uh, worthy to escape all those horrible things coming up. This channel is here to help you, brethren, to help you watch, to help you watch, to encourage you to maintain your relationship with God, to encourage you not to give up, in, in, regardless of how difficult it is to give up. So this channel is here to help you watch wherever you are, to help you watch and to help you pray for uh, to escape all these things. So thank you for coming once again to this channel. I'm very flattered in a sense that you found this channel useful for your spiritual growth, but I'm very blessed as well to be uh, with many of you who have exactly the same background as I do with the Worldwide Church of God, and I'm blessed in the sense that uh, being brethren and being of the same faith, we can now continue in that faith until the very end. So uh, thank you again for being here. Be encouraged. Don't give up. Maintain that relationship. God is the one who called you. It was not any human. It was God primarily. He called you for a purpose. And therefore, uh, along with this channel, brethren, continue to watch. Continue to watch the prophesied events being fulfilled. Continue to watch. And I pray with all of you that we all be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are happening. Until the next time, friends, goodbye.